I've been a Halo fan for a long time now. I started playing it at my friend's house in April of 2004. I looked at my friend's TV screen in his bedroom and seen Halo Combat Evolved with him playing through the mission we all know now as the silent cartographer. Damn, I love that mission. I owned a PS2 at the time, so when I seen what he was playing, I was blown away. I asked him, like, dude, what are you playing, man? And <laughs> so epic. We lived in New York City at the time. Just some boys from the Bronx. And damn, we started having the best times that summer with Halo Combat Evolved. The land parties, New York City pizza, of course, Yu-Gi-Oh! All hanging out at my, my friend's swimming pool. <laughs> oh, the best. Later that year, Halo 2 was announced to drop in November, and my goodness, Times Square was on fire. Collecting Joyride figures and Toys R Us and everything, it was just truly a time to be alive. My friend actually was the first to get Halo 2, so each time I went over his house, I ended up just turning on his Xbox and booting up Halo 2. <laughs> I was absolutely addicted at that point, and I am sure he was quite annoyed by it at that time. Mike, if you're listening, sorry, bro. <laughs> but thanks for everything, man. <laughs> yeah, I I enjoyed it so much, getting lost in that alien world. I ended up getting Halo myself. And I even began playing the computer version of Combat Evolved. Arguably just to use my favorite gun other than the plasma rifle, which was the Combat Evolved Fuel Rod gun. Man, do I love that thing. I still think to this day it was a mistake to make it belt-fed in all the other future titles. I mean, the Covenant don't even have any ammo pouches in their silhouette anyway. They all, they all use EMP-proof battery weapons. <laughs> anyway, I ended up moving away from my home city in New York, and... Even in my new town, my new school, tons of kids were obsessed with Halo. I still remember all of us preteens and young teens with our talks and rumors. In 2006 of how well Halo 3 would end up being like. And, and then, oh man, those epic Halo 3 E3 trailers hit. And oh my god, we were all shook. The good times from Halo 1 and 2 truly felt far from being over at that time. But little do we know that Halo 3's announcement with it, the good times as far as the game development goes for Halo was actually just about done. Yeah, we had no idea. Truth is, Halo has been going through a drought, a tough one at that, since 2011. Some would argue that it's even dead once Bungie left, and <laughs> though I enjoyed a few things 343 has created here and there, namely Halo Wars 2, and even that had its fair share of issues. Sadly, I have to agree with everyone. Halo did die once Bungie was gone. And the community, whether they want to admit it or not, they know deep down Halo isn't what it once was during the days that I know from Halo 2 and 3. Well, my video here isn't necessarily to hate on 343. I've done well enough of that throughout my years, especially since 2014, when my hope in uh, the franchise fell apart, basically, with the Master Chief Collection. I was cursing people out left and right, <laughs> and well-deserved. I take none of it back. The community was full of idiots at that time. They were all full of hopium. It is what it is. When I was already moving on with my life and ignoring everything Halo as humanly possible, pretending it never existed, basically, back in 2015, after seeing that god-awful trailer for Halo 5, oh, I still want to barf thinking about it. I was dogging 343 with the well-earned criticism it deserved at that time. But yeah, like I said, 
community was full of opium, and it wasn't until after Halo 5 came out that the majority of the community finally got the memo that I was trying to pump out a few years prior. That Halo is not the same. And yeah, now it's dead. So, no, instead of, instead of that, with the news of 343 recently rebranding itself, this video is more to share the ideas of a man who has been there from the beginning. That ideas that have followed, it may just help quench our collective thirst for good and hopefully resurrect Halo from its grave. So, firstly, a good start is to just get rid of 343, which has been said for quite a long time now, and apparently it technically happened with this rebranding. Only time will tell, but that's a good start. By extension of that start, Halo needs to just, once and for all, the first thing that they do, kill this whole microtransaction, free-to-play, buying rec packs mentality, just get rid of it completely. We don't need it. It's destroying the, it's destroying everything. What Halo needs basically is a full game at launch with full juicy campaign, full camp, full matchmaking with tons of maps and game modes like Slayer and Oddball. We need Forge and Firefight and Theater, all of it. We need all of that at launch. That's first. Secondly, I would say what Halo needs is to be rated M again. That means cursing, that means tons of blood, adding some gore even. Not exactly horror, but a horror-esque theme here and there. Things like that, you know, those darkly lit areas where you actually need your fucking flashlight to see before a flood fucking combat form pops up and smacks you in the fucking head. Yeah, those creepy alien corridors, things of that nature. We need that back. Third is the development of maps and physics. <laughs> Say what you will, but Halo never felt more fucking alive than in Halo 3. The physics were the best the game has ever been, and we need that back. I want to be able to hit a warthog with a fucking gravity hammer and send it flying across a map. Simple things like grenade jumping. Things that made Halo feel alive. Like it wasn't just some digital fucking prison. And to add to that alive feeling is a map development, actually. No, not a fucking graphics engine like Subspace or Unreal Engine. Or, it looks beautiful, like downright beautiful. I mean, when you open up an old Halo game guidebook is what I'm actually talking about. You can actually visually look at a map's blueprint. When you look at the blueprint, it almost always looks like a legit, simplistic, symmetrical, creatively built map. Like a playground of sorts. For on foot, or for vehicles, or for both. That's what they need back in Halo. My fourth point is the AI. To work almost like a cog in a machine. That machine being a living, breathing environment that's symmetrical and alive, like I explained just before. But the AI that reacts to you. An AI that reacts to you. As a player, you know, yeah, Halo's always sort of had this, this whole AI that reacts to you. But examples of it working terribly as well, you know, in Halo 4 and 5, where either the AI are usually extremely overpowered with zero telegraph movements and laser beam weapon projectiles, or they're severely underpowered and broken, running into a wall. A good example of all this is, <laughs> look no further than the fucking Halo 4 Prometheans. I don't care if you say you actually liked fighting them, because no the fuck you didn't. They're terrible and they're not fun to fight against. I don't have a good time shooting my entire fucking magazine Zorth into a Promethean Knight, only for him to teleport away, re-get his shields back within three seconds, and then teleport back and one-hit me with his fucking sword. That's not fun. A lot of people used to bitch about the Brutes being fucking bullet sponges, but at least they didn't do any of that bullshit. So, yeah, 
about AI. AI needs to be fun to fight against. As much as I have a ton of issues with Halo Reach, I could make a whole separate video on that, by the way, on all the issues I have with Halo Reach and why I think Bungie really dropped the ball there. But AI was at least still fun to fight. The whole bandwagon community loves Reach so much because, yeah, it was still fun. And yeah, I enjoyed Halo Reach still, enough to play it on Legendary several times. And even get to the rank of General Grade 3. But the point being, yeah, it was fun. And lastly, I mentioned music before, I believe, but damn. Martin O'Donnell and Michael Salvatore. Musical geniuses. My last point is, alongside the usual beautiful piano and opera music from them, I'd say we need heavy rock music back. Yes, heavy rock, heavy metal. In certain areas of the gameplay, of course, it's fitting for it. We need that back. You get in a tank, right, to blow up any inhuman son of a bitch out of your way on a bridge with the boys. Play that guitar riff. You hop in a banshee to dogfight countless other aerial vehicles. Play the Hoobastank song. You enter an air arena to, to watch brutes and elites, like, massacre each other. You best fucking bet Branky Benjamin is playing. You watch Chief leap into space for fuck's sake to give the Covenant back their bomb. Absolutely let the Halo theme play. It, it, it needs its badass image back. You can't have that with some weak-ass music or rap music or any of that. You need metal, you need rock back. The days where... Shit, Breaking Benjamin and Hoobastank, like I just said. They would make soul tracks for Halo. Celebrities, famous celebrities that just got finished playing as Marines in movies like Doom and Resident Evil and all that. They were voice acting for this game. It was big. It needs to be big. It's a part of Halo's roots that needs to return. Make it feel epic. Make it feel cool. You know, when I seen the new video, A New Dawn, I remain skeptical but somewhat optimistic. I mean, I admit it looks beautiful. Seeing the new technology games are capable of today is surely impressive. I applaud the way the elites look, actually. They are really good looking. My take is, you know, even if they are just Halo Infinite assets that's being used, it don't matter. Basically, if this new quote-unquote studio, you know, Halo Studios, if they can just keep how the alien species art style from how they looked in Halo Wars 2, and some inspiration from Infinite's art style for the most part, they can keep that, but also keep it simple. You know, no crazy different amounts of armors and everything. Just have standard armor that we all know and love from Halo Combat Evolved, where every elite had the same type of armor, only using different colors to catch the human eye, to differentiate their ranks. It'll work amazing if you combine those two things. Though I have to say... <laughs> I am tired of seeing almost everything holding an energy sword. Especially low-ranking blue elite miners in the Covenant. Spartans. Like, all kinds of Spartans and Master Chief. They're always showing and holding energy swords. The elites, especially if they're, you know, like a low-ranking elite. They need their classic plasma rifle back. Give the swords only to gold zealots or white counselors. All right. Hashtag make Halo Combat Evolved the Elite a standard again. Hashtag Combat Evolved the Elite Supremacy. <laughs> but, you know, aside from my tangent there on Elites and Plaza Rifles, which is the most iconic yet forgotten about Alien Gun in the Halo universe, by the way, it was the first to ever see on screen by the Elites in the old Macro stuff. Uh, well, other than all that, another idea of mine is just bring back all the classic gun sounds. 
especially to the Covenant guns. You know, I actually really like the dealer in 343 games, but to be honest, the sound of it in Infinite was, especially in Infinite, the sound of it, sounding almost human in nature from a distance, it was like an instant turn off. Just give me the classic Halo needler sound. Give me the classic Halo 2 and 3 plasma rifle sound. Give me the classic Halo charged plasma pistol sound from Halo 1 and 2. Shit, if you throw a carbine in there, make it sound like the Halo 2 and 3 carbine, you know? Just do that. <laughs> and to add to this gun dilemma, by the way, you know, all these use useless guns that I remember being in the Halo Reach sandbox, just drop them. You don't need all this shit. And I mean drop all of these nonsensical weapon ideas entirely. It started with Halo Reach, the plasma repeater. They could have just made that the plasma cannon from Halo 2, where you break it, like in Halo 2 uncut, you break the fucking plasma cannon and then it's you could use it as a gun. Just, they could have just been that. <laughs> So things like the plasma repeater, storm rifles, skewers, pulse carbines. I'll explain later actually what I think the pulse carbine should be and who who it's used by. But things like this electric gun theme with EMP abilities, like shock rifles, etc., etc. The list goes on. Just get rid of all this shit. Instead, utilize the classic guns from Halo 1 to three, and some from Reach. And I guarantee you, the gun, the game's gunplay will play just fine. Another note of mine is, as much as a few people may like it, because they're just so used to all these new other first-person shooter games over the decades, is <laughs> advanced movement mechanics, man. No. Halo does not need, it doesn't need advanced movement mechanics to work. That means sprint is a no-no. Goodbye, sprint. Get the fuck out of here. This isn't Battlefield. This isn't Titanfall. This isn't some generic fucking shooter game where, yeah, typically you do need aim down sights and sprint and slide or maybe a jetpack. You need those things in generic shooter games. But this is Halo, for fuck's sake. It's Halo. First-person shooter Halo is just not supposed to work that way. If you don't agree with that, then you don't like Halo. <laughs> it's really that simple. You know, because it's not supposed to work that way. And if you make it work that way, then it's just not Halo anymore. It's something else. It's now an entirely different game with Halo characters and a Halo name slapped on it. Remember, there's a reason that people are still playing Halo 3 multiplayer to the, the most to this day. There's no arguing the facts here. The population count has remained very high in Halo 3 over the years, more so than almost any other Halo game, or fucking probably even any other first-person shooter game for that matter, too. But why is that? It's simple. <laughs> it's because the mechanics and the sandbox and the fucking uh, everything just worked in Halo 3. Those mechanics is what Halo was supposed to be, how it's always meant to be. And the truth is, Halo worked best when it was simplistic like that, almost arcade style in nature. You know, in the beginning, it, Halo was like an old arcade PC style shooter game, but it was one that broke the rules for those types of games of its time. It was an arcade style shooter that broke the boundaries of just being your corridor to corridor game with a non-reactive AI, like almost all other first person shooter games that came before it. Predecessors like Doom or Quake or shit, even Marathon. <laughs> Those are great games, but, you know, they were basically the predecessor. 
where Halo chose to be different. It came from that root. It came from those roots, but it chose to be semi-open world and semi-linear. The linear part was reinforced by great storytelling. It wasn't as linear and restrictive as Halo 4, but it wasn't as fully open world as Halo Infinite. Halo needs to like tread that line in between while leaning a little bit on the linear side. I mentioned honestly like how the good storytelling is basically what reinforced the linear side of Halo. So what makes a good Halo story? How do we make a good Halo story? Starting now, at where we're at right now, how do we make a good Halo story? Well, if we were starting from scratch, it would be a different story. But if we're going to move forward from here, or even reboot the series from here, I would say just stick to what Bungie started. What they started and gave us, just go with that. No, no, there's no need to like reinvent the wheel here. Like what 343 has been trying to do for so many years. If you do, if anything, if you end up trying to remake Halo Combat Evolved, remake Halo 2, remake Halo 3, just don't change the story a single bit. Just keep everything exactly how it is. Put it into this new Unreal Engine and amplify it. When I say amplify it, I mean basically, you know, I don't know. Using basically Ruby's Rebalanced Halo Combat Evolved <laughs> as the new foundation for Halo Combat Evolved's game. God, man, that that game is amazing, actually. Ruby did an outstanding job. I can't stress enough for Halo fans to go and like play that. It, it really breathed new life into the old game. The way it was kind of always meant to be played. So that's more or less what I mean when I say to amplify the game a bit. So just take that game and throw it into Unreal Engine. We'll be good. We'll be good with Halo 1. A bad way to remake the Halo game story is to basically try to revamp the entire cities to fit this whole narrative of forerunners are not humans theme. You know, the whole scenario where fucking millions of books are based on nowadays. All because of one scumbag named Frank O'Connor who single-handedly created that idea with his little terminals that he made and this one little comic book. Fuck that. We know, okay, we painfully know that Bungie fully intended humans to be the forerunners all along. It's hinted at throughout the series and is the big surprise in the end. Even my dad who never played Halo. Several years back, we sat there together and he watched me play through Halo 1, 2, and 3. And without me explaining a thing to him, he said to me during the beginning of Halo 3, so foreigners are humans, huh? <laughs> it's that obvious. So just roll with it and forget what the fuck Frank O'Connor said in his shitty terminals and his book and everything. Get these books and all this bullshit. Because... Yeah, that Forerunner being human reveal, that's Bungie's love letter to us. That is Halo's story to us. That we are the heroes. We are the fucking reclaimers to save the galaxy. All of us. Humanity. And Master Chief, he was just one hero. The main hero. The main, like, focal lens the one lens to look through and recognize that. So keep Bungie's story. And instead, my idea is to just completely reboot Halo 4, 5, and 6. And just completely start a whole new story after Halo 3.